I'm Larry Walther. This is principlesofaccounting.com chapter 18 and this module extends the examples and thought processes we developed in the previous module related to CVP analysis and now we're going to look more specifically at sensitivity analysis where we assume changes in variable cost or changes in fixed cost or even blended changes or changes in revenue functions. So recognize that cost structures can change over time and management must carefully analyze these changes to determine the effect on the business. Let's revisit Leland Sports from the previous module. Remember in the Leland Sports example, we needed sales of $2 million to break even. There was a 60% contribution margin and a fixed cost pool of $1,200,000. Now, in revising this example, we're going to assume we hire a sales manager at an annual fixed cost of $120,000, and that would increase our fixed cost pool to $1,320,000. If we divide that by our 0.6 contribution margin ratio, we come up with our revised break-even sales of $2,200,000. In other words, this is the same break-even calculation we did previously, but we've added additional fixed cost into the equation. This simply means that by adding the sales manager, we're going to have to see a $200,000 increase in sales to justify the expenditure to at least cover that fixed cost. We can also look at changes in variable cost. If Leland adds the sales manager, but instead of paying them a salary, instead pays them a commission of 4% of sales, then the revised break-even is $2,142,857. This results by dividing the continuing fixed cost of one million two by the revised contribution margin ratio of 0.56. In other words, instead of having a 60% contribution margin, we only have a 56% contribution margin because each additional dollar of sales incurs another four cents of cost or commission for the sales manager. And so the commission structure may appear to be more logical because our break-even sales point is $2,142,000 instead of $2,200,000. I've graphed this to do an analysis, however, and recognize that that's not a constant. It really depends on the level of sales that are generated. So here I've plotted the uh, sales manager's fixed salary at $120,000 and done an analysis to determine the manager's total compensation. It's constant no matter the level of sales. In the alternative, I also prepared a plot of the commission, the sloping line. If instead of having a fixed salary, we have a commission, if there are no sales, we pay nothing. But on the other hand, if sales are very high out here at, say, $6 million, then we're paying $240,000 to the sales manager. So whether we're better off or worse off really depends on the level of sales. What the previous analysis does not show, however, is that human behavior also needs to be considered. Commissions may provide an inducement for the sales manager to perform at a higher level. At $6 million in sales, for example, the commission-based manager makes twice as much as they would at the fixed cost of $120,000. The business is going to be much better off at the $6 million sales level, all things considered. And so sometimes the lowest cost option is not the best cost option in terms of affecting the total profitability of the business. In the previous example for Leland Sports, we first modified the fixed cost and did an analysis, and then we modified the variable cost and did an analysis to see what the effect is on break-even. Okay? Many cost changes, however, involve both fixed and variable components shifting. Such is the case for Flynn Flying Service. Flynn has a jet that it currently owns and operates, and it costs $3 million per year fixed cost to operate it, but the contribution margin is only 30%. They're offered an even exchange for a new jet that has a higher $4 million fixed cost operations per year, but its variable cost is lower and it has a higher contribution margin at 50% of sales. Assuming Flynn expects $9 million in revenue, is it better to exchange or not? And so Flynn should make this deal. The break even on the old jet is $10 million. In other words, the $3 million in fixed cost divided by the 30% contribution margin ratio tells us that we need $10 million in sales to break even, whereas the new jet only needs $8 million in sales to break even. That's calculated as the $4 million in fixed cost divided by the 50% contribution margin ratio. So now perhaps you're beginning to appreciate how significant the value 
is of understanding your contribution margin ratio and your fixed cost structure and how quickly you can do analysis of business decisions. Of course, this could be a double-edged sword if volume levels did not reach the $9 million level or drop below the $8 million level we may run an analysis and find we're better off keeping the existing jet. So our assumptions need to be valid for our analysis to be valid. Finally, we've looked at cost shifts. We have not talked about revenue shifts. And so I'm going to look at an example where we have a 10% increase in sales price for Leaping Lemming. We looked at Leaping Lemming in the previous module as well. But here we've got sales of 10,000 units at $1,000 per unit total revenues would be $10 million. If we're able to increase the sales price by 10% to $1,100 per unit, total sales will be $11 million. So it's only a 10% increase in sales price, but look what it does to our net income. We go from a $500,000 income to a $1,500,000 income. I think you would agree that's a significant change in the profitability of the business. Again, this behavior, this profitability behavior, is a function of our cost structure. Now, the analysis I just looked at assumed rather cavalierly that we could get away with raising prices 10%. However, customers may be very sensitive to pricing. It could be that we'll see a significant drop in demand if we raise our prices 10%. And so further analysis may be required. A company needs to assess how volume drops can be absorbed when prices increase. For example, if Lemming desires to at least maintain its $500,000 of profit when it increases its price, what level of sales drop could be absorbed? And we could actually see sales be cut in half to only 5,000 units. In other words, our fixed cost of $500,000 plus our $500 target income, that's our pool of cost and profit we need to be able to cover, divided by the $200 per unit contribution margin would tell us that 5,000 units would allow us to achieve our target income level. Another issue to consider are cost plus pricing agreements that seek to provide the seller with an assured margin but no more. In other words, you may be buying a product and say, look, we think it's fair to allow you to make a 15% profit and so let's agree that, our, that the selling price for our transaction will be based on cost plus 15%. Uh, however, those agreements can have unintended consequences as we will now see. Heap and Pioneer have entered into an agreement that provides Pioneer with a contribution margin of 20% on 1 million bags delivered. Originally, the bags were anticipated to cost Pioneer $1 to produce and fixed costs were $100,000. However, assume there was a huge increase in the price of petroleum, which is a base raw material for plastic bags, and so that the variable production cost rose to $3 per unit instead of $1 per unit. So let's see what happens in this case. First of all, looking at the $1 scenario, I've calculated sales at $1,250,000. That allows us to recover our variable cost of $1 a unit times the million units and gives us our contribution margin of $250,000, which is 20% of sales, from which we subtract our $100,000 of fixed cost and profitability that we anticipate is $150,000. But we're entitled to pass on our cost increases with the $3 scenario, variable costs are now $3 million, a million units at $3 a unit. This requires us to charge a sales price of $3,750,000 to give us our 20% contribution margin, that is 20% of $3,750,000 is $750,000. Our fixed costs are unaffected, however, so our net income is now $650,000, a large increase from the $150,000 we previously expected. And so this should illustrate quite clearly why cost plus contracts can be dangerous. The seller has very little concern about controlling costs because they're passing them through. And indeed, if those increase in costs are all variable in nature, there's no change in fixed cost, the seller can actually make a great deal more as variable costs go up. So one needs to be very careful in dealing with cost plus contracts.